Hello, my name is Tridar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Babylonian house in Minecraft. Let's get started. So let's start by taking a tour of our Babylonian style house. That's the general style and color palette I've tried to use for this. Of course we have copious amounts of lapis for this. But I will say up front that if you don't want to gather this much lapis, you could use perhaps a dark prismarine would be a good substitute block. I think it's quite a nice house. I've tried to put in all the, the relevant details. Uh, I have dispensed with adding some trees in the blank spaces here. In the gardens, you can put in a couple more trees if you want to of your own design. I think uh, those would look uh, quite nice. But you've seen the materials list. You're going to need quite a lot of uh, in stone bricks, sandstone, lapis, deep slate tiles, and a couple of blue glazed terracotta. Because if we take a closer look, I think the blue glazed terracotta, it pairs really well with the black uh, deep slate tiles and the lapis because, you know, it's got both colors in it. So this goes together quite nice. And then a good uh, contrast color for this is the endstone bricks or the sandstone. Now you could just use straight sandstone if you don't want to gather the endstone bricks. But I'm sure you never thought the day was going to come when you'd be using endstone bricks for anything, but... Here we are. Uh, so if we land, let's go inside and take a look. So here at the front door, of course, we have a couple of ferns on either side of the entrance. And of course, the interior is much like the exterior as far as coloring goes. But the floors are all done in the blue glazed terracotta. We got a couple of pillars to help hold up the second story over there. And a uh, coffered wood beam ceiling up there as well. Lots of space in the main room here. There are a number of other rooms. We've got this large side room over here. And then a smaller side room down here. This would be good for a bedroom or a storage room, perhaps an enchanting room or something like that. Over here we have another entrance that goes out to our covered porch right there. And that leads out to uh, the side exit over here. And of course another fern. So if we go back in our house, back in the main room, we have back here through the double doors we have a, a nice little back porch here for you to relax on. You can put some more plants and everything around here as well. I think, uh, I'm sure your view is good wherever you build this is going to be a lot better than mine. So you might think about uh, maybe a scenic place that you might want to put this at. If you've got a good spot in your world that's just been uh, uh, waiting for a Babylonian house, you can, of course, put it in there. Now, if we go up the stairwell, though, we've got a small landing, and then we go up here to the second story. It's just one room up here. With an opening to the sky over there. Through here, we have another porch on the roof. Even more ferns up here for you. And uh, over here we have another larger porch as well. Because you know the Middle Eastern houses they're known for having a uh, lot of space on the roofs and everything. Not a lot of rainfall so you can get away with having the flat roofs and everything like so. Uh, for this, though, I did not put uh, access to the um, to the topmost section of the roof like I did for the Minoan house because there's really nothing, uh, there's really no place to stand up here. Nothing much to do. But I think it's a pretty good house design. It'd be a good, a good complement to the Minoan house I already did. That's why this is going to be the follow-on video for that. Of course, if you haven't uh, quite had your fill of Bronze Age houses, you can have uh, this one to uh, to sit in your world somewhere. There are going to be a few more different house designs. I can't say that this is going to be the beginning of a whole Babylonian series, but there may be a few more buildings coming in this style. Perhaps a certain uh, suspended uh, botanical arrangement. 
but we will have to to see about that. So you've seen the materials list and the dimensions and everything. So the first two dimensions right here beginning the tutorial are going to correspond to uh, the the rectangle here. The, the edges you can see done with the end stone bricks. Let me lower down a little bit. We're going to start doing the counting in a moment. I just want to give you a top-down view on that before we start. And I think we will start here at the front door. Uh, so we want to start here with uh, the um, the end stone bricks. I should say before I start uh, that the uh, of course the world is available for download in the video description for both Java and Bedrock versions, as it always is. Uh, and uh, let's start. So if we want to place down our first block of end stone bricks there, we want to count for 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 15, and then 16 and 17 blocks. 17 block long row there, and then turn the corner and run for, uh, what, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 4, 7, 30, 31, 32, 33, 36, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43 blocks. And then turn the corner and go for 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 14, 15, 16 blocks. And then 3 blocks right there. Uh, 4 stairs here straight across there and then three more blocks there and then go for one two three six seven eight nine twelve fifteen eighteen twenty one four seven thirty thirty one thirty two thirty three blocks and then the uh, numbering for this should be the same as for the others until we get to the corner, well, let's go back. Just go back here and count count over to that. So three blocks there on either side, and put the uh, the four stairs in the middle. And oops, I broke a block. And then count for one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, four, seven. 30, 33 blocks. Then turn and go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And whatever, um, you can just fill in from that point there all the way back down to where we left off counting back down there. All right, so that's the outer edges of the garden walls. Behind that, you can see that we're going to be filling that in with some oak leaves. If you have a different type of leaf block you prefer to use, you're of course welcome to do that. Uh, so here, now let's count the foundation out for the house. Uh, so we've got our four blocks here behind for our stairs, and you can do all this out of um, uh, sandstone if you want to, but a lot of this is going to be hidden by the floor level we're going to be doing. So we, you really only need to do the uh, the perimeter that I'm going to be showing here with the with the red and the torches. Uh, so two blocks on either side of that for what? Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then two, three, and three, and one, two, three, four, five, six. And then two, three, one, right there. And then two, three, four, five, uh, what? Six, seven, eight. And then three in front of that. And nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 to get to there. And then a little corner right there. And then count for four. And then turn and go for one, two, three, five, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen blocks. And then count over for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fifteen, eighteen, nine, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two blocks. And then turn and go for one, two, three. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then one in the corner. And then go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hello, Mr. Sheep. 
Are you enjoying the tutorial? Good, good. Uh, and then here in the corner for one, two, three, well, for, for however many that is. And then one, two, three, four, five, and then three, and then one here, and one there. And then straight across for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then a long run of one, two, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, sixteen blocks. And then one, two, three, four, five. And then three. And then two more right there. And that should bring us full circle back to where we started. Right back over there. So I'll give you a good top down view of all that counting that we did. Now this is phase one. Uh, we're going up one block slices at a time. This is a very, let's say, literally foundational phase. So this is the thing that you want to count uh, three, three times. All those numbers you want to count three times. Uh, because if you make a mistake now, it's, uh, you know, it's going to cause problems later. So it's worth the effort to get all that straight. And we will continue on phase two. All right, so let's start back over here. So on top of all the garden walls, the end stone bricks, you want to go around and place uh, sandstone half slabs on top of all of those, all the way around the building, just like so. We'll take a look at that first, and then we'll take a look at everything behind that. I probably should have taken a closer look at the oak leaves, but you can see for the oak leaves, you're just... Um, you're just doing an outline of those right behind the endstone bricks that we placed down and the sandstone for the house foundation. So you're just putting it right in front and wrapping it all the way around. Over here we just have a little inset rectangle with one block spacing and the same here for the side yard. Uh, I don't think it's going to be very difficult so we're not going to count that. Um, uh, let's continue on with the stairs here. So four more stairs and then two more on either side right here and then two more here and then turn and place well let's just place some red behind that. So there's our four stairs and then here and it's for six and then I think actually on the, all of this uh, sandstone here if I just break some of these blocks this is going to go right on top of the sandstone that we, that we previously placed. Okay, and then behind that here for our door, we have uh, the the uh, the bottom of the door frame here with two blocks of deep slate tiles, and then behind that we have the pattern of the blue glazed terracotta. Uh, now for this, you can uh, you can randomize these blocks if you want to. You don't have to place them all in just a single orientation. You can randomize them a bit more. Um, if you want to get a little bit more fancy, you could use uh, this in conjunction with, um, I think, uh, perhaps uh, the cyan glazed terracotta is also a very nice block, would fit in quite well with this. Perhaps some uh, light blue glazed terracotta, or if you're really adventurous, you could use some white glazed terracotta here and there, perhaps, uh, perhaps even a little black glazed terracotta. If you're going to use the dark prismarine, though, for the build, I would recommend shifting this over to a gray glazed terracotta. I think that might pair a bit nicer. Or perhaps uh, the gray and the green glazed terracotta for that. For all the exterior trim, though, I would go with the, gla uh, the, the gray one. Uh, but anyway, I left them in this configuration because it's, it's a lot easier to see the numbering of this. So we don't have to do any more laborious counting, but you can kind of see we're just putting in a big uh, rectangle right behind all of the sandstone that we're putting on the foundation that we just laid down. There's a four block gap here. And then for the exterior porch, there is the uh, the black, no, the, the, the deep slate tiles and the blue glazed terracotta behind that and just a big rectangle, just like so. And here along the back, the uh, sandstone just going right on top of the previous sandstone in all the corners and everything that we just placed down. And then uh, stairs back over here for the, the side porch on the front. 
and the terracotta for that. And then back here, we just have this one little block right here for the, the doorway that comes in from the porch. All of this here, this is a cobblestone. This is just filler material. You don't really necessarily have to have that. And then we have just a couple of blocks here for the doorway into the second chamber. And here, I think this was, uh, this is for the stairs, actually. I'm pretty sure the uh, stairs get covered over, yeah. Right there, so you don't actually need these, uh, these three blocks of deep slate tiles. That can just be cobblestone. Uh, back here, we have the doorway. Now, this doorway here, this is straight across from our main entrance, just like, just like so. Just straight across there. And then back over here, we have a little bit of cobblestone and one tile there for the doorway into the small chamber. All right, so let's get a top-down view of that. And then we will slide on over to phase three. Uh, so we got the foundation out of the way. So now what we're doing is putting on the uh, the walls for the house. Uh, here, though, we have the foundations for the columns. Just in stone bricks. Behind here, we have the grass and the trap doors. Of course, these are our planter pots for our double tall ferns. Right there, behind that, we have the doors. You want to... Go ahead and put those down, just like so, for the spruce doors. If you want to use a different type of door, that's perfectly fine to do. And then uh, in stone bricks on either side of those, and the foundation level here is just all going to be deep slate tiles. You can see this is going right on top of the sandstone that we already put down. like so. So back here we have a few more planter pots and a few more column bases. Right here uh, our doors on just straight across there. And these have an intercolumnation distance of four blocks. For those, another planter pot here. And then a couple more column bases and a few more planter pots. And again, the columns are all spaced out at an interval of four blocks. That's going to be the rule for the, the Babylonian columns. Uh, so back over here, uh, deep slate tiles again, just straight across there. And for the projections, of course, we have just even more deep slate tiles. Uh, here, four more column bases and a planter pot for the, uh, the front side porch and then deep slate tiles behind that and our doorway right there. And um, this can, that's extra blocks. Uh, all of that can be cobblestone if you want to. For that on the interior here, we have uh, two block spacing and then four blocks and a column base and four blocks and a column base and to the other side there and then we have those just on on either side at four block spacing for the main hallway uh, back here on the interior we have the start of the stairs our two blocks of stairs right there and then our other double doors here into the second room and then deep slate tiles on the wall behind that Not too bad, not too bad at all. All right, back here, let's start at the doorway again. Uh, so we've got the endstone bricks now. And for our column shafts, we have the, the lapis blocks. And of course, for the walls, we have the lapis blocks also. We're using lapis because um, the Babylonian house design, it's, it's, you kind of have to think that, uh, what if the Ishtar gate was reduced to a house? What would that look like? That's what I was thinking of when I did this. So that's why we're doing uh, the blue glazed uh, terracotta with this in conjunction with the lapis. Because it's it's a really nice, I've, uh, lapis is one of my favorite blocks. It's just got that lovely royal blue color to it that you can't really get anywhere else. 
in Minecraft. There aren't there aren't any, really any good replacement blocks. So that's why I suggested like um, uh, Dark Prismarine is the next best block, I suppose. I mean, you could cheap out and do like blue wool blocks, but that's it's not exactly recommended. Uh, but if you do want to replace the color scheme, of course, you, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but we are using the, the blue, the lapis blocks here because of all the blue glazed uh, bricks that the Babylonians like to use on things. And you can see here it's just going right on top of the deep slate tiles, except you know we are, we're alternating that with the endstone bricks and the uh, the lapis. And in here, in these little corners, you're not going to see those blocks, so you could probably get away with. Saving yourself a couple of blocks there on the interior fill when, a, when um, like if it's an exterior block, or, or rather, I, I'm saying all that bad. If it's an interior block, you can get away with making it any random block or leaving it hollow. We're just concerning ourselves with the exterior. So, lapis blocks on top of all the column bases, just like so. Same deal for the interior columns. Let's scan around the exterior first, and then we'll take a look at the interior rooms. So you can see that we're just doing repeating patterns with all this stuff. And oh yeah, you definitely don't need the, the lapis there. Well, no, I take that back. You need one lapis block there for the interior wall. I was trying to do a different design for this. I was trying to I was trying to put this door over here at first, but it just didn't really work with how the staircase needed to needed to go, so I ended up moving it over here. All right, so the detail for the interior. It's like so. And we would go on to phase uh whatever whatever this is. One, two, three, four, it's gotta be phase five. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, put down your double tall ferns right there. And uh, for the lintel over the doorway, we have the, the deep slate tiles. And then we're going to be extending up, of course, for the columns, just the lapis blocks like so. And then we have a, a banded design we have going here for the Babylonian uh, uh, theme. Uh, we have, of course, the spruce... Um, uh, lattice work in here for the windows. This predates glass windows, so we have to have uh, lattice work, wooden lattice work in for our windows. So that's what we've got, we've got to work with. Just like so. They may have had glass, but I don't know. I, there's no evidence that I can find that they used it for windows. So we're going with the lattice work. Uh, but if you just want to, you know, be different and put in some, some perhaps some light blue stained glass, you're welcome to do that as well. Just like so, all the way around the exterior. A lot of repeating patterns for this stuff. Once I show you a little bit of it, there's nothing really to say about the rest of it. And here, uh, this was going to be, I mean, our... It, the the house looks best when there's a window here, but there wasn't a room left to put here because the stairs got in the way. So what I did was we're just having some false uh, windows here, just just for appearance sake. Uh, let's see. So interior, extend up all the columns and the stairs, just like so. And then, of course, send, extend up all the columns around the, the back as well. You can go ahead and plant all your ferns and the planters if you are so inclined. Or you could plant it with something else. If you want to perhaps maybe do some, uh, some sweet berries in there, you could do that. Or perhaps some, some azaleas would look nice. Uh, but let's go on to the next phase. So here by the doorway, I've got uh, more spruce fences. Extending up all our column shafts. And we're alternating back to the lapis.
right along there. Just like so. We will scan around the exterior first and then we'll take a look at the relevant interior details. All right, so details on the interior now, the stairwell. Right here, I think you can probably get away with not having, not having that lapis there, I think. And we will go on to the next phase. So, over, hmm. Uh oh I think I, I miscounted a slice. We're missing a slice. That, that's it. The column's at three, but then it suddenly goes to five. Whoopsie. Uh, well, a little too, we're a little too far along in the video to scrap it, so we're just going to have to do a double phase here. I'll go extra slow, though. Uh, so back down here, we're going to be going up two blocks for this phase. Uh, it's, it's all going up vertical. So it's not going to be too much trouble for you. But here we have the upside down uh, stone brick, uh, stone brick, uh, sandstone stairs and then two slabs on either side. And then behind that we have deep slate tiles. And behind that we have the same detailing here for the reverse of the door frame. And that's going to finish off the lintel for the door. And then here uh, uh, the walls are just going up just like they did for the previous phase. We're just extending the windows up and everything. Just like so. Same deal for all the columns on the back porch. And all this back here is a mirror image of what we did at the front there. With the upside down stairs here. And then on the other side of that right here. Uh, in this room also we have the same sort of deal right here on the interior. And then here's the detailing for the stairwell. We have the landing right here. 10 blocks of uh, glazed terracotta. And then we want to turn and go this way because our stairs are gonna extend up that way. Uh, inside this room in here, we have the uh, uh, slightly truncated version of the, the lintel. We have a couple of stairs and half slabs. Uh, moving back to the exterior though, we just have the same sort of deal for this all the way around the building. And then when we get to the um, door frame over here, we've got the small lintel again right here. And then the small lintel on the other side of the door frame here. And for this door frame right here. And on the other side of that door frame here as well. Alright, so even though we went up at two blocks at a time there. My apologies, some, sometimes that'll happen. Uh, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it'd be too difficult on you. The tutorials used to all be two blocks at a time. Uh, but, um... Uh, that that was too difficult on on too many people, so I've, I I since reduced it to all be one block slices. Uh, even though it does make the video twice as long as it might otherwise be. Um, so here, of course, we got uh, the detailing for the capitals on the Babylonian columns. So after we go up for five blocks, we want to do upside down stairs all the way around here. And then we're going to end up putting a right side up stairs on top of those. Uh, behind here, details for the door frame. Well, we've done the door frame. There's just detail for the wall on top of the door. It's like so. And then everything around this is going to be uh, spruce fences and uh, end stone bricks. Uh, 
for all the columns at this level, they're all going to have the same design, the upside down stairs, all the columns on the back porch, the six columns in the main room, just like so. The four columns for the side porch. And now let's take a look at the interior. It's all going to be in stone bricks as well at this level. We have a couple of stairs there because our stairwell is turning and now going up that way. And um, that's, that's it, I think. It's pretty simple. Uh, so next phase here. So on top of all the upside down stairs that you made for the capitals, you want to go around and finish off the capital by putting down right side up stairs, four of those, on every single one of those, however many there are. Uh, behind that for the walls, we, we're back to lapis and end stone bricks here. We're done with the windows, so we're capping all that off with end stone bricks, just like so. All the way around the building for all the repeating patterns and everything. Uh, here, of course, we've got a bit of lapis instead, though, on these interior detailings. Uh, detail for the stairwell. And the detailing for the inner rooms. All right, next phase. It's going to be a pretty easy phase. Uh, deep slate tiles. Almost entirely deep slate tiles for this phase. Uh, so, for our uh, entablature, for our very small uh, columns here at the front for our porch, we are just putting down this little shape here of deep slate tiles. And then, of course, for the rest of the walls, deep slate tiles are going right on top of all of the walls. Back here for the back porch, you want to extend those out and have them cover over in a big rectangle just like so, and then back across here, and then extending to the walls here, and then extending straight through the house, just like so there. And then back here again, detailing for the stairwell, and the detailing for the inner rooms. Just all deep slate tiles on top of all of these walls. And then of course extend it out in the L shape here for the uh, front side porch. All right, uh, next phase, another easy phase. Uh, you want to take now your blue glaze terracotta and put it on top of all the deep slate tiles. For these, uh, for the front porch, you also want to fill that in with deep slate tiles underneath there as well. I'll just go around here. You can see we're doing that on the inner room as well. And for this section of covered back porch, right behind there, you just want to cap all that off with the blue glazed terracotta. For the stairwell also. And then for this uh, pergola on the front porch, uh, on the front side porch here, we're just doing that with uh, spruce fences, just like so. Kind of give us, uh, kind of give us a, a Middle Eastern uh, flair for the pergola porch design. Of course, you want to have extra shade from the sun. Uh, so uh, next phase here, we want to put off um, uh, on top of here, on top of all the blue glazed terracotta. You can go around and put cobblestone on top of all of that. I'll just show you from the top down. On top of all of that, and then in front of that, we want to put upside down sandstone stairs. Just like you see down here as a cornice. And then 
a full, a full block of sandstone back there in that little corner. So you can see we're just wrapping them around like this here for the cornice design. Then once you hit this point here, of course, it's the same deal for over the front, uh, the, uh, the back porch. Just like so in a big square. And then continue with the side detailing, just wrapping it around all the way around. Just like so. And then here for the inner part of the, the, the pergola, here we want to also wrap the stairs around here as well. Just right around there. And here is the detailing for the stairs. Now we're capping off uh, now the rooms with the ceiling designs. So for some of these, for the ceiling design here, uh, you of course have the spruce logs on their sides, the tree trunks on their sides. And in between them, we have uh, half slabs of spruce. Right there, half slabs. Same deal for that. And for this here, there wasn't enough. It's just two blocks of space. So we're just filling that in with uh, full tree trunks, just like we're doing for the stairs here. Here's a ceiling design for the side room and the small room. So if I just land here and take a look at that briefly, and also want to mention we need to do upside down stairs here, a big square, well, rectangle right there for the back porch. And uh, these, I don't think we need those. Those can be cobblestone probably. And we will move on to the next phase. All right, so here, uh, a couple of detail blocks. We would need to put on a little, um, I, I just, it's some little uh, decorative uh, finials in the Babylonian design because they have, they have that kind of little uh, uh, up down, up down parapet thing that they put on their houses, so. So that's what that is. Behind that, we of course have the full blocks of deep slate tiles. And then here on top of the upside down stairs, we have the sandstone half slabs. Then behind those, we have the deep slate tiles. Just like so. And then behind that here, we have uh, the, the design for the porch. For the roof porch, one of two that we took a look at. And then here, of course, we have the design for uh, the, the decorative uh, parapet. Just like so. All right, I'll go all the way around this so you can see all the details. And that brings us back to the front porch. Take a little bit of a closer look back here now. So we have uh, that there for the, the small rooftop porch. And then we have this one over here for the large rooftop porch. And right here we have a big square for the upper level. Right there. And everything else is pretty much deep slate tiles. We're also finishing our staircase right here and uh, there's the entire thing from the top down all right next level up we're now putting on uh, we're doing more walls and uh, some other things uh, so here we have just a couple of half slabs and a few more blocks Right there. And then behind that, we have the wall design, of course, that you're familiar with that we're just replicating for the second story. So I'll scan around and we'll take a look at that. You can see we've got uh, some more planter pots and uh, three more 
column bases back there that we'll take a look at. All right, that's almost all the way around. Like so. Now let's go deeper into the build and take a look at more the placements of these. Of course, these columns are all uh, four block spacing. And we've got, what, three planter pots up here. And then the detailing for the wall and our double doors. And the other double doors here for the other side porch. And for its four columns right here. And two planter pots. And then we have just a simple railing to cap off the stairs there with some end stone bricks. All right, that's all there is for that phase. Uh, a couple half slabs right here and there, and that'll finish off the front porch. Uh, behind that, let's take a look at the design for the walls. We'll make our scan around the outside of the building, and then we'll take a look at the interior detailing. All right, that brings us back to the porch. Let's take a closer look now. At the interior. And I think that's all there is for that one. Let's move on to this next phase. Gonna scan all the way around. We're just putting on some sandstone half slabs on top of these last decorative features, and then we'll just be focusing on the central section of the building. You can go ahead and plant your uh, last set of double ferns if you want to as well in the planter pots. All right, so let's take a look at this from the inside. It's just a simple square room with repeating patterns, so that's all there is to see. Let's move on to the next phase. I think, did we, yeah. We're only focusing on the, uh, the upper room now. Because that's all there is left. Not too bad, we're just extending the walls straight up pretty much. Uh, next phase, same deal. Of course, we've got uh, the same detailing over our door frames. 
that we do for the the uh, the ones that we did down below. Uh, same detailing on the inside as there is on the outside there. For both door frames. Next phase, uh, deep slate tile phase, and a couple of uh, half slabs. On top of the door frames, just like the previous door frames, uh, do that for uh, both doors, both sides of both doors, and that's all there is to those. Otherwise, the rest of the wall here, you can see that's just, that's just deep slate tiles. All right, next phase for all of these, uh, what is it, it's at uh, seven columns, Three over here and four over there. Same detailing for the capitals that we did down there for those. For these, just go ahead and do that for those three and these four over here. And if you want to, you can go ahead and put the, the stairs on top of them as well. Uh, for the walls, you want to put uh, uh, blue glazed terracotta on top of the deep slate tiles. And a big square with the projections, and then that's all there is to that one. Next phase, put uh, cobblestone on top of the deep slate tiles, and then go around and put the cornice of upside down sandstone stairs, just like so, all the way around the, the square part of the building. On the interior, though, we need to put on the, the wood beam ceiling, according to this design here. All right, next phase, you can fill in the roof with uh, cobblestone if you want to. And on top of the um, on top of the roof beams here, you can see we've got some blue glazed terracotta and a, a last little bit of lattice work here with the spruce fences. Uh, otherwise, everything else is going to be deep slate tiles and uh, a couple of half slabs right here. So let's, uh, let's scan around the perimeter. And uh, that's all there is to that. Uh, next phase, on top of the deep slate tiles, we want to put down the uh, entablature of uh, blue glazed terracotta. And then behind the porches here, you can go ahead and fill it in with a rectangle of spruce fences for the, uh, the pergola. And same deal for the side porch over here as well. And then everything else here for the roof, you can just fill that in with straight deep slate tiles. Uh, some sandstone here, and then we have the, uh, the roof ridges made out of sandstone as well. And then we've got um, deep slate tile half slabs and a big square around that. All right, next phase, uh, on top of all of the blue glazed terracotta, I think you want to put down uh, cobblestone because we're putting down a second cornice up here on top of that. Just like so. For the upside down stairs. And then on the interior here as well, upside down stairs over both of those. And here's a simple roof design we're doing with the deep slate tiles and the, 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 the full blocks and the half slabs. And then we have the sandstone on the, on the corners. All right, next phase, we're finishing off the roof and adding the decorative uh, parapet around the building. With uh, the lapis, the deep slate tiles, and the half slabs. 
just like so. All right, that's all there is to that one. Let's move on again. We're just finishing up the details for the parapet now. Pretty simple, just a few blocks left to go. All right, now on to our penultimate phase. Mostly just uh, a couple of blocks of lapis and all the rest of it's gonna be uh, um, sandstone half slabs. I wanted to call it spruce for a moment, but it's clearly not spruce, it's, it's sandstone. All right, so once you have done those, I think there's going to be four blocks of lapis here on the corners that you need to go around and place uh, four last sandstone half slabs on the tops of those on the four corners here, there, here, and here. And once you have done that, your Babylonian house will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the Babylonian house. I want to thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.